Thanks, Kelly. Well, that was a really, really um, good speech you did. And okay, I'm going to do the same thing like she did. Everybody close their eyes. Don't listen. Don't pay attention. Um, seriously, though, um, three things I'm scared of. One is hominy, um, which I'll bring that around full circle in a minute. Um, the second is public speaking. And um, the third is uh, microphones. So, <laughs> so when Rain called me, I wasn't actually expecting to use a microphone, but he called me and asked, could I um, speak on um, one of his pillars of health? And that's, uh, I said, sure, because I eventually have to get over this if I'm going to continue to speak in front of people. Um, so thanks. That made it more awkward. Um, so I, I, I do about five or six uh, speeches in front of people a year, and I'm getting more and more comfortable at it, but it still really, really sucks for me. So super, just so you know, if I sound nervous, it's because I'm nervous. All right. Um, I, quick story about that. I uh, was actually selected as the builder of the year for Durham and Orange County last year, and there's about 200 of my peers at the Christmas party, and I didn't know I was going to be winning the award, so I probably drank more than I should beforehand. <laughs> And they called me up to get the award. And it, not only did it really surprise me, but I also hate public speaking. And these were all people that I know and my peers. And I was like, um, thanks for this award. I kind of like some of you. And I didn't think that I said that. But then afterwards, like 15 people came up to me and were like, you realize you just said you kind of like some of the people in the room. And I was like, I don't remember saying that. But um, I just was really, really scared. Uh, another story about that is, um, I was in uh, South Point doing something similar to this. There was about this many people, maybe a few more. And I was with one of the guys that works for me, and he's a lot more um, better speaking, more fluent than I am, better at public speaking. And uh, we, we rehearsed our whole thing. There was about, there was, he was going to speak for about 10 minutes, and I was going to speak for about two minutes because that's about all I can handle. And he did his thing. He did great, just like you just did, a wonderful job, and everyone's like, man, this is just a really good speech. And then he hands me their microphone, and this was about two years ago, and I just choked. I could not even say a single word. So for me to get this far in this is um, very impressive. I literally, <laughs> um, it was super embarrassing, but um, I literally just handed it back to him. He, he picked it right up as if nothing ever happened and made me look really good, and like I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed. So um, that being said, thanks, Rain, for inviting me. I appreciate it. Um, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks, uh, Lululemon, um, for giving me super, super um, comfortable pants in this awesome outfit. So I don't know if you guys know that, but I mean, probably the most comfortable pants I have. And, um, but seriously, though, I'm, I'm humbled to be here. Uh, although I run one of the largest remodeling companies in the Triangle, and I have, um, I have, I have you know, 20 plus employees, I still feel like I shouldn't be teaching anybody anything, especially about our relationships. I've been married to my beautiful wife for 14 years, and my friends here, we've been friends for 20 plus years, and two of my best friends are in the back, and, but I still feel like every relationship is a struggle, but um, with, with work, it's, it's definitely worth it. So um, that being said, uh, real quick, um, I'm here to speak uh, really on kind of like business relationships, and, and like I said, because I'm not a good speaker, I take notes, so um, relationship health within business, within, um, I guess, coworkers or employees, and um, a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up in an orphanage. Well, it's really an inner city boarding school, but I guess the closest thing you would call it is an orphanage. It was really a home where kids lived and there were no parents. So, um, and there was no money because it wasn't state funded. So super poor. Um, there were some times where we had zero food or very, very, very little food. Um, one time I remember uh, when I was seven or eight years old. The only food I had for lunch was hominy, which is back to why I hate hominy. Um, I started that off, like they fed all the kids hominy because that's all we had to eat. And so now to this day, I absolutely hate hominy and will not eat it. Um, and thankfully I don't have to. But I grew up with no family. I grew up uh, here on Holloway Street here in Durham. I've been here my whole life. Um, it's called Agape Corner. It's now closed. But, uh, you know, I, at that time I had to I had people around me all the time, but I didn't have any real relationships. Um, I, I was always trying to protect myself, always trying to, um, you know, look out for what's next for me. How can I protect it? That, that's kind of where my entrepreneurial spirit came from. I was selling lemonade on the street when I was like eight years old because I had to make money to support myself. To, if I wanted that, I, I remember walking around for a month 
with a box of waffle crisp when it first came out and it was like the best thing ever because like I bought it with my money and no one else paid for it and so um, and I didn't want anyone else to steal it from me so um, but like th that started my like entrepreneurial career and so I worked for five or six different companies you know Chick-fil-A and a couple other places and I never really got the sense of like you know family or you know that I just felt like something was missing and so I thought that if I started my own company and did, you know, did my own thing, that I'd be able to kind of create my own family um, that I didn't have growing up. And that's kind of what I've done um, with the family, with, the, with my company now. Um, I, I know there's a lot of lines that are blurred and people think like, well, you know, boss and, and employee and coworker, like, you know, it should be very business and very, um, you know, black and white and you shouldn't intermingle those things. But um, I have a very different mindset on that. I, I literally just had a beer with my employees before I got here um, just to hang out and just talk about his family and how he's doing. And um, one of my best uh, employees and also is now one of my best friends, he started with my company about five years ago and didn't have, um, you know, didn't have any tools, didn't have a truck, um, but he had drive and he had passion, he had character, he had everything that I liked in a person. And, um, you know, five years later, he's running the construction for my company. He's going to make six figures this year. And that's just like watching him develop and grow. And now he has a baby and, 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 his, and his marriage is doing well. And he's just a really, really good friend of mine. Like that, that, that's my passion and that's what I love to do. And that's what I really enjoyed being able to kind of create that fa family atmosphere, even though we have, he's from England and we have no blood relation at all that I know of. Um, it, I really kind of try to create an environment where everyone feels like their family in my company. Um, and I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know, if I can speak too much more on personal relationships, I struggle with those, but, but I do know that I, I like to have people around me and I like the people around me I like to care about and the people that work for me and with me and that, I'm, that are friends of mine, like they're all people, you know, we're obviously there, um, you know, there's the, the work relationship, but at the end of the day, they're, they're, they're people, they're humans. They want, they want to have that connection just like I want to have that connection. Um, they want to feel protected and cared for and loved just like I want to. And so I try to create an environment where that's a reality. So um, I think that's it. I don't know if I got anything else. Anything particular, you probably want to wrap that up better than I did. Thank you guys.